So what we're going to look at today is a neat little app I've discovered called Balsamic Mockups for Desktop. You can find it at balsamic.com. As you can see, it's $79 US, but there is a free trial available. This is kind of a neat little program where you can create a mockup for things such as websites or an application you might be developing or an iPhone app. And instead of getting, spending too much time getting caught up in the glossy style elements of colors and gradients and all those kind of things, this really allows you to just focus on the key elements of the interface, where to put images, where to put text boxes, and all those kind of things. I find it really valuable working with clients that way because they might, you might give them a mock-up that you've done in Photoshop and they're like, you know what, I don't know if I want that color, can we try this? And, and really all you want to focus on is, you know, hey, we'll get to that later on, but for this phase, let's focus on, do we want tab bars, do we want to go horizontal nav or left nav, all those kind of things. So. Uh, as I mentioned, you can do iPhone apps and other desktop apps, but for this quick sample, I'm going to show you maybe how it might work if you were going to do a, desk, uh, a web page mock-up. So let's get rid of our text box here. So as you can see, everything here is done in a hand-drawn element. They have it grouped into different categories so you can find what you're looking for relatively quickly. You can find all of them, and you can see there's, there's up to 75 different elements uh, found in this program. The nice thing too is that once you get to know the program, you start to know what the names of some of the elements you might be looking for. So since I know I'm going to do a website and I want to look for, uh, I'm looking for a browser window. It's sitting right here, but I can also type browser window and it'll automatically throw it right into my workspace. And you can see I don't really have a lot of room to work here, but that's mainly just because I'm working um, at a 1280 by 720 resolution. So this will show up nicely in YouTube and other places, but I can scroll this all the way down into the uh, app as, I, as far as I want to go. So here, as you saw, when I resize this app, it'll actually show me the dimensions. So if, I want, if I'm doing a website and I want to have it at a minimum of 1024, well then I can set my browser to 1024. Another neat little thing is I can double click on this and I can actually put the name of the website we're, we're working on. So say we're going to do a website for Microsoft. We can put their name up there, we can put their domain. I'm going to type microwave. Let's try microsoft.com and it will throw it here in the address bar and in the title bar. So it's kind of a nice little touch. Every element that you add, it brings this little pop-up where you can see all of your options. You can undo things, you can group them, you can lock them so they don't move around, layer them, all sorts of neat things. So since this is our main canvas now, this browser window, let's lock that so it doesn't go anywhere when we click and drag. Alright, so let's start by throwing in uh, the Microsoft logo. We can do a search here. We're going to search for image. And when we throw in an image, it just does a nice little placeholder. So if we don't have the logo already for the client or the photo that we're going to use, we can use this dummy placeholder. It also has a nice option where you can go in and import an image. Now I have in my browser, we're going to go do a quick search, and we've got the Microsoft logo right here that I grabbed off the web. So I'm going to copy the URL right from the web page, go back to Balsanic and now I can say import an image. I could Im import it from my desktop, somewhere on my computer, from the web as I just did, or from Flickr. So here's the URL in there. I'm going to say load, and there's a logo we want to put into our mockup. The other nice thing is because we we're working with these hand-drawn elements, sometimes it's nice to keep them locked into that mindset of not the final product. So you can click on sketch it, and it has this hand-drawn feel to it as well which I really like. So let's throw our logo up here in the corner. Perfect. So next we're going to throw in some links. So let's do a quick search for link bar. By default it already throws in some link names in there. This is going to be one that we're going to put up in the top here. We're going to change the links. You can see that when you separate the name by a comma that's, what it cr that's how it creates individual links. We're going to do about us and contact us. There we go. We have the option to uh, bold it and change the font sizes, but I'm pretty happy with that size right there. And let's put that up in the top corner. So next we want to actually have kind of the body of, of the site. And so we're going to have um, another link bar, let's, or another nav bar. Let's go with a tab bar. Tab bar is kind of neat. We bring that down here. The same idea. Um, you can see the, the dimensions as you resize it. And when you double click on it, you can change the names of all of your links. So I could call it Home, and Windows XP, and Windows Vista, Windows 7, and there are the links. And again, I can click on that, and this 
this menu pops up and I can change my sizes. I could change the orientation of the tabs if I wanted them on the bottom, if I was doing you know something that wasn't a website but an application. And I can even say, well, this is the home page. The visitor is going to be on the home page. Let's highlight the home page with our selection here. So there we see that our home page is highlighted. Some neat stuff. Obviously, we can throw in text and we can throw in images. You've seen that. Let's go and try to throw in some other interesting things. Say you're doing a blog. You can grab the calendar app and throw that right in there. You can even set. Um, I thought on this one you could set the date that you were. No, nope, you can't do that. I thought you could set the date actually for the calendar. That might have been for one of the other add-ons. You can add all sorts of different um, elements. If you were, say, going to design a form, you can bring in combo boxes and you could say call that product and, and populate all of those elements as well. Uh, if you were going to have icons, you could bring, say, an icon and the icon name. I think I misdragged that. I did. Let's let go of him there. And let's call this product as well. Oh my gosh. Learn how to type product. There's product. Now it says select an icon. So let's go over here and we can take a look and it has icon search. You can either type what you want to look for or you can click on the drop down arrow and you can browse through um, dozens of different icons to throw in there. Let's go with our clock icon and select that. You can also change the sizes. So we're going to say select and it's a pretty small icon. Let's boost that up a little bit and we can go and set that to a large icon. Now see we had four or five different products we wanted to list or items that we just wanted to keep in line. So let's not shift things around there. Let's click on our product. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and I'm going to paste it a couple more times. You'll see that when I have, uh, when I want to line that up with another item here, it puts that little blue bar and that shows that that's centered with other items within that same proximity. So now I can just drag it there and I say, okay, it's got a blue line and I know that it's going to be lined up with my other products. So yeah, it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool application. You, as I mentioned, you can use the same, um, the same process for creating standard desktop apps. But even iPhone apps are kind of neat. You can take, click on iPhone, drag this down, and there you go. You've got this mock-up of an iPhone. You can bring in the keyboard if you're trying to get a sense of, you know, how much real estate you've got to work with for an app. You can bring in all sorts of different elements and um, and modify them the same way that you can on a website. So it's uh, definitely worth looking into. It's, again, Balsamic mockups for desktop. It's $79 US, but there's a free trial. I think the, really the only limitations are it doesn't let you save it, and I don't think you can have multiple mockups running. Uh, another nice thing is if you are a not-for-profit and doing something good in the world, contact them directly, and there's a good chance they'll give you a free license to play around with. So there you go, Balsamic mockups at balsamic.com.